Good evening and welcome to Prime Time News coming to you live and direct from the News First studios here in Colombo. I'm Bernadine Jaya Singha for News First, where the people come first. Let's now take a look at headlines. President says the country will have to go through a further six months of hardship before returning to normalcy. SJB MPs meet President. Several MPs, including Dulles, say will not accept ministerial portfolios. Aragalea protest site will not be removed until the 10th, an undertaking by the Attorney General. Mahana Matero released on bail, Udeni Kalutantri and six others suspected of misusing President's flag further remanded. Rainfall to reduce after the 10th. Private bus owners strike ends. President Rani Vikramasinghe has says Sri Lanka has six difficult months ahead as the island nation attempts to stabilize the economy through agreements with the IMF. He was speaking at a conference organized by the Advocate Institute in Colombo this morning. The two-day conference organized by the Advocata Institute was held under the theme Let's Reset Sri Lanka, hashtag Reform Now. Well, the way out is through the agreements that we have with the IMF, the staff level agreements, first and foremost. I don't think there's any other way out. People talk of alternative measures, but that has not worked. If any member of parliament or any party says we are not for it, then we have the right to ask, what is your solution? Because all parties must abide by this agreement. It may be bitter, but any medicine for recovery is bitter. So we know the path we have to take. Secondly, and more uh, important, is the sustainable debt. How are we to handle the sustainable debt? First, the foreign debt. And when you look at the official debt, are we getting caught into the geopolitics of the region, of Asia? That's the first issue. So until you settle the, uh, come to an agreement among the official creditors, it is not possible to go to the London club. Second, and the more important issue is, uh, have we got to look at the local debt? Now, that has far-reaching consequences. The Lazards, the financial advisors are looking at both debts. So remember, the first part, we have to look at both the foreign debt and the local debt. It's certainly going to be a difficult time. I, I, I won't say no. The first six months will be difficult. It will be a period which we have not seen before. But we all have to go through it. If anyone has a formula, proposals, that will make it easier. Certainly, I think we should hear it. And the parliament could then decide between these two sets of proposals. Otherwise, we have no other way except to bite the bullet. President Rani Vikramasinghe met with representatives of several groups of the Anakalya protests at Gaul Face. The meeting was held at the President's office. We put forward three points at the meeting today. Firstly, we oppose the suppression of peaceful protesters at the Aragalia. We request the authorities to stop this immediately. Also, we requested the president to direct his attention towards the violence which unfolded at the Gaul face that was instigated by Mahinda Rajapaksa. We requested for a commission to be appointed to study this Aragalia that result in a major political transition in the country. The president has given us quite a positive response to this request. The phase of the Aragalaya at Golf Face is now over. New political measures must be taken. This does not mean the Aragalaya is over. The Aragalaya will continue. We believe that the Aragalaya must continue. Until the Aragalaya's objective is achieved and the people's demands are fulfilled, the Aragalaya will continue. But the decision as to whether the people will vacate the protest site must be decided by the people there. None of them were asked to come to the protest site. Therefore, we believe that they can't be told to leave either. We informed and requested the president to do justice to these people. Just like we gathered here respectfully, give us a reasonable amount of time to respectfully leave. The protesters today removed the Gotago Gama school and other structures at the protest site. A group of people who were at the protest site vacated the area.
Another group of protesters were still seen at the protest site. Why are they trying to chase us away? They're not just trying to suppress the protesters. They're trying to sell this site off. The Shangri-La building, its land and the port city have already been sold off. Only this protest site is left today. Sri Lanka doesn't have dollars. There is no income. We don't have a production economy. Vikramasinghe is now planning on selling off this very valuable plot of land in order to purchase fuel and gas. The Attorney General today pledged to the country's appeal court that the illegal camp set up at the Gota Gogama protest site in Golface will not be removed outside of the ongoing legal procedures until the 10th of August. Additional Solicitor General Sumati Dharma Wardhana appearing for the Attorney General told the Court of Appeal that the Inspector General of Police will be advised on this matter immediately. The Attorney General gave this undertaking when the writ petition filed seeking an order to annul the order issued by the Fort Police for the protesters to vacate Gota Gogama in Golface by 5 p.m. today was taken up for consideration. The Court of Appeal stated that there is no impediment for the respondents to begin the legal procedure to remove the illegal structures from the area. The Court went on to note that this undertaking does not impede those who wish to voluntarily vacate the area. The petitions were taken up for consideration before a bench comprising of Court of Appeal Justices Sobita Rajakaruna and Dhammika Gane Pala. Additional Solicitor General Sumati Dharmavardhana informed Court that he has filed preliminary objections seeking for the petitions to be dismissed. The additional Solicitor General submitted to court that the Court of Appeal does not have the jurisdiction to hear this matter regarding the fundamental rights of freedom of expression and freedom of speech that the petitioners claim is being violated. He pointed out that although the petitioners claim that the protest is peaceful and that no illegal activities are taking place at the protest site, that is not true. A report prepared on the situation in the area was furnished to court. Additional Solicitor General Sumati Dharmavardhan pointed out that the land the petitioners have occupied belongs to the Urban Development Authority and the illegal structures erected by the petitioners violate the Urban Development Authority Act. It was also revealed that about 20 tents in the area were removed by 9 this morning. Appearing for the petitioners, President's Counsel Salia Pires, making submissions in court, said that this protest was being staged from the 9th of April and added that the police and the Attorney General had accepted the fact that the protest was peaceful. He went on to note that when the President was serving in the office of Prime Minister, he had appointed a committee headed by Ruan Vijay Wardhana to look into the needs of the protesters at Golface. The President's Counsel questioned how the structures erected at Golface became illegal structures suddenly when the protest was ongoing for the past four months. He alleged that the actions taken by the police to suddenly remove the tents of the protesters without a court order is illegal. Justice Sobhita Rajakaruna questioned the additional Solicitor General as to what powers the police possess to remove the protesters from the site. Responding to this query, the additional Solicitor General said that the police have the power to intervene when public peace is disturbed under Section 56 of the Police Ordinance. President's Counsel M.A. Sumantharan stated in court that he stands with the protesters and does not approve of the actions taken by the police to forcibly remove the protesters from Golface. Venerable Mirahavate Kashyapatera, Erosh Alponzo, Asanka Aberatna and Lahiru Anton Madhushan Fernando had filed the petitions. OIC of the Fort Police Sagar Leonage, Inspector General of Police C.D. Vikramaratna, the Urban Development Authority and the Attorney General have been named as respondents. The case is to be taken up again on the 10th of August. These tents and huts cannot be removed without following the proper legal processes. They cannot remove these structures using military and police force. The Federation of University Teachers Association convened a press conference at the Golf Face protest site today and expressed their views on the government's repressive actions. Even though this government came into power by bending the law in parliament, we can see that this government still has not provided solutions for the issues that caused these people to take to the streets and gave rise to this struggle. If you all think that you can suppress this struggle and stop the voices of these people, you have been mistaken. Do not try to discredit a movement supported by the entire country by affiliating various names 
groups of people with the other we might be able to scare people and suppress their voices but it is us who will fail as a country the public safety act is there to protect the public not just the leaders central bank thieves are still out there hingannna ge tuwale wage parala parala tamanta ona welawata tamanta vaas denna di meka ausa ganna hadanne pa api me mardaneyata biya unoth api if we are afraid of the suppression if we run in the face of the suppression they will continue to come after us we must face this oppression head on today the achievements of this peaceful struggle are being reversed one by one by this doorman president don't take a step back we are with you hasara tiyanne pa api obath samaga sitinawa janadhipati wera me janata aragalayata pratichara the president responding to this people struggle and leading means that the mandate given to the president as well as to the parliament is politically cancelled this is not a question about the provisions of the constitution there are provisions in the constitution to appoint an interim president after the president resigns this provision did not enter the constitution based on a previous assumption the president will leave as a result of a popular uprising so to adjust these constitutional provisions to such a special situation is to interpret the constitution in a politically questionable way therefore it is actually problematic to try to understand the presidency of president ranil wickremesinghe based on the provisions of this constitution e anuprapthika janadhipati bhave therum ganima gatlu sahagathai Fort Magistrate Tirina Gamage released on bail Venerable Khoswatte Mahanama Thera today. The Venerable Thera was released on a surety of 100,000 rupees. On the 28th of July, Fort Police arrested Venerable violating court orders. President of the Jatika Sevaka Sangame Udeni Kaluthantri and six others who are in remand custody were further remanded until the 12th of August. The suspects were arrested over the charges of forcing their way into the president's house on the 9th of July and taking selfies while posing with the official flag of the president as a bed sheet and posting this content on social media. The Ceylon Teachers Union handed over a letter to the European Union office in Colombo. The letter informed the EU about the suppression of protesters and the arrest of trade union activists including Joseph Stalin. The police today informed court that the proper procedures were not followed to hand over the 17.8 million rupees since it was discovered at the president's residence. Director of the Police Special Investigations Unit SSP DS Vikramasinghe informed court that he has submitted a report to the Inspector General of Police recommending disciplinary action against all police officers involved in the incident. He informed court that investigations into the incident revealed that senior DIG in charge of the Western Province Deshabandhu Tennakorn had contacted the OIC of the Fort Police Station over the phone and directed him to hand over the money to the Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas. Fort Magistrate Tilina Gamage ordered the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission and the telephone company to hand over recordings of this phone conversation for the investigations. The logs placed by the OIC of the Fort Police referring to the phone call made by the senior DIG of the Western Province Deshabandhu Tennakorn were also furnished in court today. The director of the Special Investigations Unit said that a report on the procedure followed by the police officers from the moment the money was discovered till it was handed over to court has been submitted to the IG P. These facts were presented in court after court issued an order to present reasons behind the delay in producing the money in the custody of police to court. The request by the police to name a group of 10 people including Hirunika Premachandra as suspects over charges of disturbing the peace opposite the president's house was rejected by the fort magistrate today. The group including Hirunika Premachandra who was arrested on the 6th of last month for disturbing the peace opposite the president's house was released on bail. When the case was taken up before Fort Magistrate Thilina Gamage today counsel appearing for the defendants argued that the manner in which the police had filed the complaint is contrary to the law. 
The Honourable Judge said the police will be dismissed. The police will be able to prepare their documents legally and file a fresh case properly. Many of the people brought to court are those who are in the They are being produced for things like eating pepper from the refrigerator, sleeping on the President's bed, using the President's toilet and for taking the President's flag. Many people in court today are those who are involved in the Aragalaya. We are ashamed of this. Field Marshal Sanat Fonseca visited the Balikada magazine prison to meet Anagali activists who were arrested. Some of the people in custody here were arrested for sitting on the president's chair after he fled the country and for sitting on the flag of the president who fled the country. They told me they are being harassed for no proper reason. They said they will not stop their struggle even if they continue to be suppressed. We don't believe that Ranil Vikramasinghe will do anything for the country in good faith. The landslide warning issued to eight districts including Gaul, Hambantura, Kandy, Kegal, Matale, Matara, Nur Elia and Ratnapura has been extended until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Motorists have also been warned to be cautious when driving as the main roads leading to Nur Elia, Nan Oya, Diagama and Thalavakali and Hatton are covered in fog. The Med Department says heavy showers and strong windy conditions will reduce after the 10th of August. However, the Disaster Management Center says that five people have died and three others have gone missing due to these heavy rains. The body of the 17-year-old girl who went missing on Monday after being dragged by the currents when visiting the Gulboda waterfall has been found. The tragic incident occurred when she was returning home. Although the Navalipitiya police and local area residents began an operation to find her, the rising water levels of the Gulaboda Falls hindered their efforts. The girl's body was found in a stream last afternoon. Her relatives identified the body. Five days have passed since three people were swept away by the Navalipitiya Katabula Oya during heavy rains, but their bodies have not been found yet. Two men and one woman who were residents of Pudukartu and Akkaravatta in Katabula Vatta are missing. A mound of earth had collapsed and trees had fallen along the main road in Bangala Hatta Nanuoya Nuarelia. This disrupted the flow of traffic along the Hatton Nuarelia main road. The assistant director of Nuarelia District Disaster Management Unit, Ranjit Alahakon, said vehicular movement was obstructed for about five hours. Two houses were damaged in Madho Vitaalla and Udupihilla in Valimada after strong winds brought down several trees last night. 350 people from 92 displaced families have been taking refuge at the Sri Muthumariyamman Kovil in Navalapitiya since the first of this month. They are residents of Second Lane in Kitultota Navalapitiya. Eight sluice gates were opened at the Polgulla Mahavali Dam. The heavy showers experienced across many parts of the island have claimed the lives of several Sri Lankans. The people in the hill country of Sri Lanka were among the worst affected by the harsh weather. A significant number of people lost their homes, leaving them helpless. Many have sought shelter inside relief camps. Gum at the Sahana Yatra responded quickly to try assist those affected. Our teams were able to provide some relief to the people living in Hydri, Temple Store and Blackwater in the Nuarelia district. This was made possible by you, the people of Sri Lanka. Your spontaneous help and support enabled Gamet the Sahanayatra to respond at a moment's notice to help us in need. In times of need, in times of sorrow, both today and tomorrow.
with the people gum matter empowering the nation the second phase of the divi sabia program to distribute dry rations to families affected by the economic crisis got underway in the jaffna district today Supported by LOLC Holdings, essential goods were distributed today to low-income families facing serious financial difficulties in Jaffna. The opening event got underway at Kopai in Jaffna. Dry rations were also distributed to around 120 families in the Point Pedro Divisional Secretariat. It's day 30 of the program and dry rations were distributed at three locations in Jaffna today. Today is the final day of the second phase of the Divi Savia program. News first with the people. You're watching Primetime News. Let's now cross over to a short commercial break. Enjoy a highest return for your investments from LB Finance right now. Earn a highest interest rate of 23% for 8 months fixed deposits. LB Yasei Suru, an unparalleled reward for a trusted deposit. Ah, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a sink. Hey, I'm talking about a snow. 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 खड़े रिपेयर करने के नाम पर गम चुटता मेरे वाके प्रश्न वाले तो होता है मैं विषय दूँ मैं इस लोन कम चुटता है बे एक मिनट दागन है इस लोन पाई हो गया इस लोन कम चुटता है मैं इधर रखा मैं सिर्फ ये जो तू जाले नाला कार में खाया दें रंग में प्रसर रीन मिला दी गन कम बैक टू द न्यूज Following the President's invitation to hold discussions on an all-party program, members of the Samagijana Balavega, led by the opposition leader Sajid Prevatasa, arrived at the President's office today. Following the President's invitation, members of the Samagi Jana Balavege, led by the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, arrived at the President's office today. The group arrived on a bus from the office of the opposition leader. My hope is to approve the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution after presenting the budget in August. While presenting the 22nd Amendment, the existing Oversight Committee has to be implemented in Parliament. Thirdly, when discussing the creation of a party leader's organization, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party suggested that we establish a National Council. We have accepted that we need to discuss the composition of the National Council and how the parties will be represented, as well as the establishment of a common minimum program. We are hoping to implement these in the long term. I would like to direct the attention of the President to the emergency law that was imposed in the country. We believe that it must be revoked immediately. Ordinary law must prevail. We also believe that the suppression that is going on must stop. We do not condone the suppression of leaders of the civil society and their supporters and leaders of the communities. We bring this to the attention of the President and we hope that this matter will be resolved immediately. We attended this discussion with a positive mindset. We came here for a collective all-party program. The people are not in favor of simply destroying distributing positions and titles. We must conduct this program in a way that wins over the trust of the people. I would like to say that we cannot limit ourselves to sectoral oversight committees. I believe that they should be parliamentary committees with unusual powers. We are against using powerless committees simply to show the world that there is a collective all-party government. If we are working together, there needs to be an effective parliamentary committee system that has certain powers. I believe that this is not possible merely through sectoral oversight committees. We need to go for a program beyond that. No, we will be holding discussions on how to implement an all-party government. The first discussion ended very successfully. We will reach a final decision very soon. We decide to meet again next Tuesday. The president presented a new proposal. He suggested we establish an all-party administration, not an all-party government. Let's analyze what is meant by an all-party administration in the coming days. We hope that by next week or so, we will have a clear interpretation and be able to move forward.
A group including SLPP parliamentarians Dala Saleha Peruma and Professor G.L. Piris met the president to discuss the formation of an all-party government yesterday. Convening a media briefing today, they spoke about what was discussed at the meeting. We clearly informed him that we will support all steps taken in the best interest of the country. We all accept the fact that all political parties need to unite and work on a single policy that is in the best interest of the people. We will support all these measures without any hesitation, but we will not be accepting any executive or ministerial positions. We also believe that further expanding the cabinet is not at all a justifiable policy at this time. The President President and the Prime Minister must be humble enough to accept the fact that the mandate of the 225 in Parliament and the mandate of the rest of the people of this country is different. You need to be sensitive when you deal with public pressure. If there are people who think that this stress of the people can be suppressed by force, I ask them to look back at the history of the world and see what happened to such leaders. <laughs> The procedure to appoint the president in parliament is legal. However, if this appointment is not accepted by the people, that will lead to a whole different issue. There might be instances where party leaders think about the number of ministerial positions their party gets and how many more seats their party can get at the next election. But we need to understand this serious political issue that the people are facing. Politicians should think about the future and not just be short-sighted. The strike launched by the Ceylon Private Bus Owners Association in protest of the fuel quota allocated by the QR code system has been called off. Commuters were severely inconvenienced throughout the day due to the strike action. Full tank. We don't have to continue the strike because they have agreed to issue us a full tank. They have accepted our request. Therefore, the main bus unions in the country decide to call off the strike. <laughs> this bus can hold 170 litres of diesel. All of these buses will be issued with 170 litres of diesel. The Ministry of Power and Energy has requested the public not to display their QR code to others. The Ministry said several incidents were reported where people have illegally refueled using another person's QR code. The Ministry said that the current QR codes of those who had faced such incidents will be cancelled and a new QR code will be issued to them. Moving on to more local news, commuters on a train plying from Fort to Avisarvilla captured a man who had kidnapped a child and handed him over to the Maharagama police. According to the police, the OIC of Maharagama had received a complaint last evening that a child who appeared to be afraid was travelling with a man on a train plying from Fort to Avisarvilla. Police officers were dispatched to the Maharagam railway station where they arrested the suspect and took custody of the child. The police said the child was a nine-year-old resident of Mailapitiya Thalavatuoya. The suspect had kidnapped the child while the child was in Kandy to watch the Dalada Pirahera on the 3rd of August. After he got on the train in Colombo, the child tried to jump off the train somewhere close to Nugegoda. It was after that incident that we saw that the child was crying. When we went close to the child, the man jumped off the train. The suspect had told the police that he came to Colombo to get clothes for the Perehera and to buy toys for the child. The 30-year-old suspect is a resident of Peradeniya. Chinese planes and ships have again crossed the median line in the strait between the mainland and Taiwan. China's second day of military drills followed top U.S. Democrat Nancy Pelosi's controversial visit to the island. Taiwan says multiple Chinese vessels and aircraft had crossed the Taiwan Strait median line for the second day in a row. The median line is the informal dividing line between mainland China and Taiwan. 
U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said China will not isolate Taiwan by preventing U.S. politicians from traveling there. They may try to keep Taiwan from visiting or participating in other places, but they will not isolate Taiwan by preventing us to travel there. And we will not allow them to isolate Taiwan. Our friendship with Taiwan is a strong one. Taiwan's foreign minister has defended U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi's trip to the island. Joseph Wu condemned the large-scale military exercises that China began around the island on Thursday. He said Pelosi's visit was extremely significant and China's response would not stop democratic politicians being invited to Taipei. China has announced it is sanctioning U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her immediate family over her visit to Taiwan. According to a statement, Foreign Minister Wang Yi said Pelosi had seriously interfered in China's internal affairs, seriously damaged China's sovereignty and territorial integrity, seriously trampled on the One China principle, and seriously threatened peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait." Unquote. Pelosi arrived in Japan on Thursday for the final stop on her Asian tour. Japan has lodged a diplomatic protest with China over its massive military exercises encircling Taiwan. China had summoned the Japanese ambassador in Beijing, as well as European diplomats in the country to protest statements issued by both the G7 and EU that criticized its military drills over Taiwan. A leopard which was hunting for a dog fell through the roof of a house in Hatton last night. We'll leave you tonight with the details of this story. With that, we wrap up primetime news. I'm Bernadine Jai Singh here for News First. For the people, come first. Good night. Take care. <laughs> That was how the resident of the house, into which the leopard fell, recounted his experience. The leopard had been hunting for a dog, jumping from one roof to the other in Lindula Hatton, until it got through a roof and fell into a room. Our reporters say that the leopard remained trapped inside the house for around 16 hours. Veterinarian Akalanka Pindenia managed to anesthetize the leopard while it was still trapped inside the house. Newer earlier wildlife officials said that arrangements were made to release the animal into a suitable environment. The plantation worker said that mountain leopards are a common sight in the Logivatuyaya area, especially at night.